For the last few years, I've had a running series of videos on my channel. The premise of the videos is how many death's breaths can you farm in one hour? Can you obtain 1,000 death's breaths in one hour? Last night, I finally got an answer to that question. What's up everybody? It's your boy Primetime back with another Diablo 3 video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the new Firebirds Finery set. But before we get into today's video, please remember to hit that subscribe button for more great Diablo content. I've got a few Diablo 2 videos in the works along with a ton more content for Diablo 3 and maybe even a few videos for Diablo 4. So build guides always get the most views and the most comments on this channel. So I'm setting a like goal for 10 likes on this video. Please hit that like button if you enjoy the video and leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the current Diablo 3 PTR. So let's talk about Firebirds. Firebirds Finery has been my least favorite set in Diablo 3 since I started playing the game in late 2016 during season eight. It was always clunky and difficult. You had to pull an elite pack with you through the entire rift or else you lost all of your damage. It was just a mess. I hated it. In the PTR for season 23 though, Firebirds received a rework and a massive buff. The set bonus now reads as the following. So the two piece bonus, disintegrate ignites enemies, causing them to take 7,500% weapon damage per second until they die. When you die, a meteor falls from the sky and revives you. This effect has a 60 second cooldown. So the two piece bonus has a massive damage bonus, plus it has a built in cheat death. The four piece set, Casting Disintegrate adds a combustion stack that reduces the cooldown of your teleport by 1% per stack. This stacks up to 100 times. You gain 80% cooldown reduction while you maintain combustion stacks. So whether you have 100 combustion stacks or if you have one, you get 80% damage reduction. And then finally, the six piece bonus, you gain 4,000% increased damage while ignite is applied to a target. Hitting an ignited enemy with a non-channeling fire spell deals ignite damage multiplied by combustion stacks. So back to the death's breaths. During this PTR, Blizzard also decided to make followers useful. Gone are the days of having to choose between wearing Nemesis Bracers and wearing Bracers that actually make sense for your set. Gone are the days of compromising your damage so that you can get double Death's Breaths. Followers can now wear the Sages set to give you double Death's Breaths, Flavor of Time for double pylon length, Nemesis Bracers, homing pads, and more. This allows a new level of flexibility. Now, before we go any further, I wanna point out that I have not tested how many DBs you can get in an hour with any other build in this PTR. It might be 100% possible to get this many death's breaths in one hour with other builds, but this was my first time ever obtaining a thousand death's breaths in 60 minutes. And guess what? This was on seasonal PTR with around 600 Paragon. My legendary gems were all level 25 or less. And this only had 9.23% cooldown reduction. That's how nutty Firebirds has been in the second week of the PTR. I believe it will 100% receive a nerf before it goes live, but let's pretend it doesn't. Let's pretend season 23 goes live with these numbers as is. This build, the way I was playing it, is a little clunky. It was not perfect. I think the problem is with the etched sigil. The twisters that get shot out do not get the six piece bonus from Firebirds. As the old saying goes, procs don't proc procs. You'll have to manually cast twister to get the full damage. But this is definitely a proof of concept. This build works on Torment 16 with low Paragon, low gem levels, and not great gear. But speaking of gear, let's go ahead and get into that. My gear, I do have a Primal Firebirds helmet, which is so lit. That was really cool to get. I'm running the shoulders, chest, pants, and boots for Firebirds. We've got a Death Wish and an Etched Sigil. We've also got Rancers, Rancers, Rancelers Folly. I wish I knew how to pronounce words. 
Damage of Energy Twister is increased by 242%, and it periodically pulls in lesser enemies within 30 yards. So it gives a uh, pixel stack, and it's really cool to just watch that stack of enemies just blow up. Next up, I am using Mage Fist, and Herbrash is Binding. We've got a Hellfire Amulet with the Glass Cannon passive. Uh, any passive will work, and here in a second I'll actually talk about a better option than a Hellfire. As you can see, a rank 0 Bane of the Stricken. And we've got a Ring of Royal Grandeur with a rank 25 Boon of the Hoarder. And finally, Convention of Elements with a rank 5 Taegook. So as you can see, Legendary Gems, not good. These are not good enough Legendary Gems. On the Follower, I was using the three-piece Sages set, Sages Journey set, to get double Death's Breaths. Aha Varian, then we had an Oculus Ring and a Unity. Nemesis Bracers, Flavor of Time, Homing Pads, and Gladiator Gauntlet, and then of course the Smoking Trimble, Thrum, Thrimble, Thumble, Thimble, words are fun. In the cube, Volthex Rebuke, Gold Wrap, and Avarice Band. Now, Avarice Band emanates, which means there is zero reason to have it in my cube. What I should have done was put Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube, removed this unity and put Avarice Band on the follower. And then, now that we don't have to wear a Ring of Royal Grandeur, we can instead wear a Compass Rose, and we can drop the Hellfire for a Traveler's Pledge. This gives us a 100% damage increase, basically at all times. The way the movement for this build works is you don't move. You stand there, and then you teleport. As you can see from my stacks, teleport doesn't really affect the Endless Walk set. So there's no reason not to wear the Endless Walk set. And then if for some reason you do have to move manually, well, instead you just get a 50% damage reduction. So you get that toughness. Now, again, this would have been ideal I didn't think of it in the video, but it is what it is. Paragon, uh, I've got, so 106 Paragon in Intelligence, and then of course move speed, went for crit hit chance, crit hit damage, attack speed, resist all, life, armor, and then area damage, resource cost reduction, and life per hit. Moving on to the skills, we're using Disintegrate with the Convergence Room to turn it into a fire skill. Energy Twister with Gale Force, Next up, Diamond Skin with Enduring Skin. I just numlock this and forget about it. Ice Armor with Crystallize. Uh, probably not necessary. You could probably run something like Familiar with Arcanaut instead for extra arcane power, but a little, little toughness never hurt anybody. Teleport with Safe Passage. Normally, I would prefer Wormhole for the extra cast, but with Safe Passage, you already basically have infinite teleports, so you may as well get the additional armor. Like, why not? And then finally, magic weapon with deflection for passives, unstable anomaly. We're also using conflagration as a passive, which fire damage dealt to enemies applies a burning effect, increasing their chance to be critically hit for 6% for 3 seconds. Astral presence for additional arcane power and galvanizing ward. Again, galvanizing ward is another thing you could probably drop off um, you could probably drop that for something like either Audacity or Power Hungry, just depending on how far away you are. Probably Power Hungry would be better. And at the same time, you could probably drop Unstable Anomaly. Yeah, you could drop your Cheat Death. Why? Because you get one Cheat Death from your set, and you get a second Cheat Death from your follower. So, you could probably drop Unstable Anomaly, maybe get Glass Cannon, maybe something like Illusionist, you know, maybe even Unwavering Will. Extra damage, extra resistance, extra armor. Can't go wrong there. But ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you for watching and thank you for the amazing support the channel has been receiving lately. Please remember that this build is not perfect. It probably will not go live onto Diablo 3 as is. It probably isn't the best farming setup for Wizard and maybe not even the best farming setup for Firebirds. But it got 1,075 death's breaths in one hour, and that's an insane number. 
that deserved its own video. <laughs> so make sure to stay tuned for more Diablo content. Again, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And until next time, we are out.